Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is a book haul. It is my end of 2022, beginning of 2023 book haul. So, a couple things to note before we begin. This video starts off in Minnesota, but actually the second half of this video is going to happen in Michigan because I have a stack of books here that I have accumulated in the past couple of months. But there are also quite a few books that I got in Michigan when I was ordering books online and doing I have a couple of Secret Santa things. And, and so a lot of things that were coming online I was sending to my parents' house because if they didn't get here before we left for Michigan, then I wasn't gonna get them and I really wanted them so I have some books waiting for me in Michigan right now so this is gonna be a two-part video and that's why I'm not sure if this is gonna be an end of 2022 or beginning of 2023 because some books I might not get until like after Christmas or whatever so just to keep that in mind um, and then, fun fact for anyone who is new to the channel, I actually have a monthly book budget and that is how I go about buying my books. Every month I'm allowed to spend $30 on books or bookish things and that is how I accumulate books. So I tend to do these book hauls every couple of months, kind of probably more seasonally coming into this next year, just to give me three to four months to actually spend some money and accumulate some of these books. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the haul. Starting off here in Minnesota, I have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I got this from a free little library while my car was in the shop. And I, I really wanted to read the series. I didn't initially want to read it when it first came out. But then for some reason, it didn't click that Carrie Maniscalco is also the same Carrie Maniscalco that wrote the Stocking Check the Ripper series. And I adore that series. So if you don't know, this book follows a twin sister who her and her sister are witches and they live kind of secretly, but when she finds the dead body of her twin, she goes and tries to find her sister's killer and she ends up teaming up with Wrath, who is like one of the princes of hell or like the underworld or something. So I think it's like a very like dark, morally gray love interest with a murder and sisterly love and witchy magic so yeah I honestly don't know why I didn't want to read this sooner like that sounds like a book that I would very much enjoy so I also have Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller I believe I got this at half price books and I really wanted to get this one because I have read all of Trisha Love and Seller's books this past year. I read one or two that I really loved and then because of that I went and read all of her backlist and she very quickly became one of my favorite authors. I think she's my favorite author of this year but my also my favorite author like of all time at the moment. So I want to go through and kind of purchase all of her backlists as well because I loved them all so much. So I decided to start with this one. Like I said, I've read it. I absolutely adored it. It is so good. I'm so excited to add this to my shelf. So this follows a our female main character who has to pass this trial in order to be a warrior for her kind of clan tribe and she is really talented really good but then she gets sabotaged on her trial and because of that she is uh, outcast and she is no longer allowed to be a part of any of the tribes unless she completes this one impossible task to get back into the tribe and for her her impossible task is killing a god which is quite difficult so Moving on, also from Half Price Books, I got Anatomy, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz, and this is a gothic romance. I read it this past year. I loved it. This is about a girl who lives in 1800s Edinburgh, and she really wants to study dead bodies, but because she is a woman in 1800s Edinburgh, Scotland, she can't really do that. So she ends up striking a deal with this really good professor that if she can pass the exam, she can take his class. And so in order to prepare for the exam, she enlists the help of a grave digger to help her dig up bodies to study them. Like I said, gothic romance, 
rated it five stars. I love this. I'm so happy to have this on my shelf. And there is a sequel coming out for it next year, Immortality, A Love Story. I totally thought this was a standalone with an open ending. No, nope, there's gonna be another one. Next up is another very popular book this year, also from Half Price Books. A lot of these are gonna be from Half Price Books because I don't have a Half Price Books in Michigan. So I'm kind of like in my last few months here in Minnesota, I'm wanting to take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, but the next one is Legends and Lattes, and this is by Travis Baldry, and this is, I've heard this is just like a hug. It's just a warm, cozy fantasy hug. It is an orc who decides to retire from adventuring and just open up a coffee shop. Cozy, I know, right? So I'm very excited to get to this. I just know I'm going to love it. And yeah, hopefully it'll be a fairly quick, cozy read. Now we're getting on to some of the Christmas books that I got. So, well, okay, this first one isn't Christmas, but it's connected, you'll see. So I got the Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I have been wanting to collect this series for a while. Pretty much since I read this first book, I knew that this was going to be a series that I adored and that I would really want to own. So this follows a book club of these men who read romance books to better kind of understand kind of how to be in a relationship but also like you know they're reading romance that's written by women to see like what women want and like just kind of better understand their partners and so this first book follows a man who is a professional baseball player and his marriage is falling apart but he really doesn't want to lose his wife so he joins this bromance book club to help him just kind of understand what he should do and just kind of open up his mind to new ideas and there's a lot of breakdown of toxic masculinity in here which I think is phenomenal for for like a contemporary romance I I will always highly recommend this so this is the first book there are five books in the series I also have a Very Merry Romance, which is the fifth book in the series. This is the one that just came out. I've read it. I absolutely adored it. Amazing. So yeah, I have the first and the fifth book, but I don't have any of the books in between, but I'll get there. <laughs> They'll be coming soon. So yeah, this follows a country singer who falls in love with this uptight lawyer. And it's a Christmas themed romance book, but like you don't have to read them in order. They're not like one after another, but... For this one specifically, I think it's good that you read at least one or two of the other books just because there's like a Christmas scene in here where all of the characters get together because it's, you know, the same set of characters for every book, just following different specific people. And it was so heartwarming and touching to read the Christmas scene with all of them together because I had gone on these journeys with all these people and I knew their backstories, I knew the struggles they had gone through. Um, so you don't have to read them in order, but this is a really good one for, um, after you've read a couple of them, just so that you can really get, like, not quite a nostalgia feeling, but almost. The next Christmas book that I got is Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cockrum, and I, this is a good old-fashioned, found it in a bookstore, never heard anything about it, purchased it, liked it. So I, again, I went to Half Price Books. And I decided that I wanted to get two Christmas books, or two holiday reads, not necessarily Christmas. And I hadn't heard of this one before. Like, this book is actually really popular on booktube now. Like, I see a lot of people reading it now. But as of when I was purchasing this, like, at the beginning of December, I think. Yeah, this was a December no, this was a November book. I, I hadn't heard anything about it. And actually, I had a harder time reading this one because... I read the summary. I didn't read it wrong, but I interpreted it wrong. I thought the fake dating was going to be the coupling in the end, not the way that she was going to be reintroduced to her second chance romance. So I was very thrown off by that, which is why, probably why I didn't enjoy it as much reading it. But now looking back on it, like if I had known that, I would have loved this book so much more. Um, so I would still very much recommend it and um, you have a bisexual main character who has lost her job her dream job and she is kind of all alone in this city and she's trying her best to make ends meet financially 
and then she is given this deal uh, with one of her landlords of, you know, fake date me and that'll allow me to access my inheritance and then I can give you a percentage of it. Only she has to spend the Christmas week with his family in their ginormous cabin and let me say, when they spend the week at the cabin, Christmas vibes 100% always there. It's amazing. But then she also figures out that his sister is kind of the girl that she like fell deeply in love with the previous Christmas and hasn't really gotten over. So, yeah, adorable, fun, very Christmassy, good book. Last holiday book that I have here in Minnesota, because I know I've got at least one more holiday book in Michigan that I cannot wait to get my hands on. Anyway, the last one here is A Cat Cafe Christmas, and this is by Cody Gary, and this is perfect. It is my current read, actually. I just started this, and I'm loving it. I love cats. I love cafes. I love Christmas. It makes sense. Um, so this is about a vet who has opened this cat cafe with her friend, and there is this marketing guy who they kind of cross paths, and it's a little bit like enemies to lovers, like they kind of get off on the wrong foot, and he's grumpy, she's sunshine, he doesn't like animals, she's obviously a vet, she's a huge cat lover. Yeah, it's just cozy. I, I really like it so far, but it's very cozy. And, uh, yeah, I really just bought it based off of, like, the title, the cover, and just the ideas of it, rather than, like, a specific plot or character trope, so... I've got two more books here in Minnesota, and then we'll just flash right on over to Michigan. I have Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mehran. I finally got the third book. I had gotten the first book and the second book for Christmas last year, and I had been waiting for this to come out in soft cover so that it could match, and then now I finally have it. And again, half price books, because apparently I only shop there now. So. Yeah, I'm very excited to complete the trilogy. I love the first book, not the biggest fan of the second book, but the third book wasn't bad. You know, like, it took a risk, and I appreciate that, and I think it paid off. Honestly, coming off of the second book, this book was better, so I have more positive feelings toward it. But I'm just happy to have completed the series, and I will always stand by at least the first book and just the concept of this series. So, very happy to finally have this completed. And the final book that I have is also another completion of a series that I've already read and adored, and that is The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. So, it has taken me so long to collect this series. I really wanted to have the original covers for the series because when I was younger and I read the series, they were with these covers. And so I wanted to have that represented in my shelves. I wanted to have the old covers, not the movie covers, not the TV show covers, not the new covers. No, I wanted the old covers. And I, for some reason, was just having a very difficult time finding the covers, um, or at least for like an affordable price. So all of these books are used. They're not the copies that I read because I actually listened to the audiobooks with my parents, but that's totally fine. And like I said, this completes the series. I now have all of the original first, like, Percy Jackson series in the original covers. And I am so happy. Because now I can move on to collecting the other required in books, but in, like, it easier to get because they don't have a thousand covers. Or I don't care if they're new or old covers because this is really all I cared about, so... They're officially all together now. It makes me so happy. Hello everyone, Editing Laura here. So in this video, I explain that this is a book haul that has been filmed in two different locations. First in Minnesota, sorry if you can hear the dog in the background, and second in Michigan, and that it was going to be all one video with those two parts. So I'm just letting you know that there has been a change of plan and I decided to actually split this video into two parts. So the first part is what I filmed in Michigan and or in Minnesota and the second part is what I filmed in Michigan. So they will be two separate videos. Yeah, I hope that clears up any confusion, but definitely stay tuned for part two coming shortly.